Is now a good time to be buying a home? Maybe you're trying to buy your first home or maybe you're even looking to upgrade your current home. Either way, there's some significant things going on in the housing market right now that are causing people to think twice about purchasing a home. What's up guys, it's James Allen, the out-of-state investor, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my opinion of the current state of the housing market, whether or not now is a great time to be buying a house, and what I anticipate is gonna happen in the future of this housing market throughout the rest of this year. Now, before I get started, do me a favor and support the channel by smashing that like button. And if you haven't already done so, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell to watch more content like this. And with that said, let's jump into it. The idea of owning a home has always been something that people aspire to do and really been a big part of what's known as the American dream. Now, why is that? Well, for one, you have pride of ownership, something nice about just owning your own piece of property that you can make it look the way you want it to. If you wanna paint that wall, you can paint that wall. If you wanna change the countertops, you can change the countertops and just make the house feel the way that you want it to feel. Now, that aside, you have the ability to not worry about a landlord raising rents on you year after year after year. You can lock in a 30-year fixed rate guaranteeing you that your monthly mortgage payment is not going to change throughout that entirety, whereas with renting, you do have to worry about that on an annual basis that your rent's going to go up. Another big reason people want to become homeowners is this well known that the average net worth of a homeowner is significantly more than the average net worth of a renter. In fact, according to the Federal Reserve as of 2019, which today it's a lot different than 2019, but even as of 2019, the average average net worth of a homeowner was about $255,000, whereas compared to the average net worth of a renter only being about $6,500. That means the average renter has a net worth almost 40 times less than the average net worth of a homeowner. And you can only imagine how much that gap has increased ever since the pandemic took place. Well, recently with the cost of home ownership going up faster than we've ever seen before, the dream, the American dream of home ownership is starting to fade away for so many people. People feel like they're left with a couple choices. They can either buy with all-time high prices and high interest rates, or they can rent and try to wait it out for a housing crash to take place, try to buy at the bottom and take advantage of prices at that point. Now, I've heard of many people trying to use this, I'm gonna wait for the crash strategy. And in reality, unless you can time the market perfectly, it can really burn you severely the other way around if you try to wait and it doesn't go to your favor. I remember people posting back in 2020 wondering, should I buy a house? or should I just wait for all this craziness to finish up, wait for the housing market to crash, and then I'll buy a house. And I can't tell you how many people would say, you gotta wait for the housing crash. It's gonna take place at the end of 2020. It's gonna take place in the beginning of 2021. It's gonna take place at the end of 2021. And once again, here we are at 2022, about halfway through the year, and we still haven't seen a housing market crash. And in fact, everybody that's waited up until now can only afford a fraction of what they could afford back then if they would've just bought a house. The reality is real estate generally works locally, not nationally. You see, over the last 100 plus years, there's really only been about two or three major crashes that have taken place over that period of time. So just because housing prices are at the all-time high and it's been about 14 years since the last major housing crash, doesn't mean that we're overdue for a housing market crash just because of that alone. So I think the best place to start as a homeowner or an investor is taking a step back and acknowledging that we don't know when the housing market's gonna crash. Once we can acknowledge that, that's the point that we can start to make our best educated guess based on the fundamentals that we see right in front of our eyes. And understanding that all it really takes is a swift change in economic policy from the Federal Reserve, and that can completely change the direction of the housing market, such as what happened in the pandemic when they made all-time low interest rates. So with all that said, what we know as of today is that mortgage rates have gone up close to 3% since January of 2021. To put it in perspective, rates in January of 2021 were 2.65% and today they're hovering somewhere around five and a half percent. We also know that house prices have skyrocketed over the last year. We're seeing over 17% growth nationwide for the median sales price. Now 17% is already a huge increase for any potential homeowner if prices have gone up that much. But when you take into account mortgage rates also going up, the total amount of payment has actually gone up over 39% 
nationwide, which means that in some areas, it's actually even more expensive than that. Now, here's the real problem. Although it's really expensive to buy right now, there's still hardly any inventory to choose from. And because real estate is based on supply and demand dynamics, when there's very little supply, prices are gonna continue to go up. So until that changes, and we are still near record low inventory levels, we're gonna continue to see prices go up. Another thing to consider is regardless of which route you choose to go, whether you're looking to buy a house or you're looking to rent a house, your monthly payment is likely to go up because rent has been going up at record rates as well. And the more people that shift from home buyers to home renters, it just adds even more demand to the rental pool, which pushes prices even higher when it comes to rents. So when it comes down to the question of should you buy or should you rent in today's housing market, I honestly think that you absolutely should buy even in today's market as long as you can answer yes to these two questions. Number one, can you afford it? Now, many people are gonna have different definitions of what it means to be able to afford a house. For me personally, I'm striving to spend no more than 25% of my income on housing. And that's all housing related expenses. That includes mortgage, taxes, insurance, HOAs, that includes utilities, that includes lawn maintenance, pool maintenance, any other type of maintenance. I wanna try to aim to be under 25%. But Sometimes if it's the difference of being a renter or being a homeowner, I would be willing to push that up to a 30% level. Now that's my absolute maximum. You don't wanna go beyond 30%, otherwise you're spending too much of your income towards housing. The second question you wanna ask yourself is are you willing to hold on to this house for the long term? Now by long term, I'm talking about a minimum of five to seven years because if you're really thinking about buying this home and then maybe two years later you wanna sell it to upgrade to the house that you really want for your family, the problem with that is, is in a worst case scenario where a housing recession takes place, you may not have the ability to sell and do that because you may end up having negative equity in a real worst case scenario. So for that reason alone, you wanna be willing to hold on to the house for five to seven years minimum. But with that said, I am saying hold on to the house for five to seven years minimum, not live in the house for five to seven years minimum because you do have an alternative where you are able to rent out the house where you don't live in the house. So at least if the numbers work, which they don't always work for primary residences, especially if you're in good areas or you're getting a very large house, the numbers probably won't work out very well for that. But certain houses will work out as rental properties as well. So you'll wanna analyze those numbers before purchasing a house because if the numbers work out, you would be able to hold on to your house and have it cover all your expenses while you're still living somewhere else if you wanted to upgrade later down the road. And then you have a rental property as well building your wealth even further. So that could be something to consider as well. You either want to run the numbers and make sure that you could rent it out as a rental property and then you don't really have to worry about the long term if you're willing to hold it as a rental property or you're just willing to live in the property for a minimum of five to seven years. So with all that said, if you've answered yes to these questions, then number one, you are able to afford it and number two, you are willing to hold on to it for the long term, then yes, I recommend that you should still consider buying in this market. Now, maybe you're not a first time buyer, maybe you already own a house and you've been thinking about upgrading your house. So in that situation, should you consider buying a house then? Now that's a whole different type of situation because you could end up paying more than double your current mortgage payment just for a slight upgrade, which is why so many homeowners are not listing their homes right now because if they were to sell their house, there's not really a viable option for them to go to. So for them, it makes more sense just to stay put because they've got these all time low interest rates locked in for 30 years. Why am I gonna pay way more money for a same size house or even lock in a much higher interest rate than I got locked in right now? It just doesn't make sense. So for most people, I'm gonna say, if you currently have a house locked in at a great interest rate, you're probably just better off to stay put and wait till things calm down a little bit. And to add to that, just looking at this from a personal finance perspective, you've been missing out on a huge opportunity cost because if you're potentially doubling your mortgage payment, because in some markets, that's really what you're looking at if you're doing a slight upgrade, then all that money could be going towards investments that are either going up in value over time, like stocks or cryptocurrency, or even real estate investments that are paying you on a monthly basis where you're increasing your monthly income rather than using it to increase your liability. But with that said, if you are looking to convert your primary residence into a rental property and then go buy a new primary residence, that could be something that could work out if you can afford 
afford it. Now keep this in mind, rental rates have gone up tremendously. And if you've also managed to lock in these ultra low interest rates of two or even low 3%, it could easily work out in many cases that you could end up cash flowing on that property. And then you could actually subsidize your new mortgage payment with the cash flow you're getting from your other property. And on top of that, you'll be building wealth with two houses instead of one. You see, for one, you're gonna be paying down two mortgages. Your tenant will be paying down the mortgage on the rental property. You'll be paying down the mortgage on your house. So that means you're getting principal pay down on two houses at the same time. In addition to that, you're getting appreciation on two houses at the same time. So if you have one house at $500,000 that goes up 10% in value, let's just say for sake of numbers, you'd be gaining $50,000 in equity. But if you had two $500,000 houses that went up in 10% in value, then you would gain $100,000 in equity just from having that rental property. You'll also be able to get some nice tax breaks when you start to have rental properties with things like unlimited mortgage interest deductions, you could have depreciation write-offs, and you'll be able to write off things like repairs on your house. So all of this over a 30-year period can make a huge difference, which is why I really do think that this could be the exception to the rule, that it may be worth doing something like that. And many people are starting to realize that have locked in these low interest rates that now is a great time to turn their primary residence into a rental property because the numbers actually make sense for a change. So if you're able to do this in a safe way, and by that I mean from a position of power, I always talk about that, buy and invest from a position of strength, okay? You wanna have adequate reserves, you wanna be able to comfortably afford it, and then especially right now with the way the market is, being willing to live in this new house for the long term. Now with all that said, I do understand that right now might not feel like an attractive time to buy when prices are at all time highs, when interest rates are extremely high as well on top of that. I mean, there is definitely a market shift taking place right now. I'm seeing it already. Things are slowing down. There's less and less competition. I think affordability is becoming more of an issue, but I am not calling for a market crash. I truly believe we're looking at a market slowdown. That's what I'm calling for. I believe that instead of maybe 17% appreciation like we've seen over the last year, maybe we see 3%, which is pretty standard. But understand that until we see these inventory levels rise significantly, we're not gonna see a shift in housing prices. We may see a shift in housing transactions, but we're not gonna see a shift in housing prices. And there's a lot of things that are keeping it so that we'll still have a low inventory with things like people not wanting to sell their house, new construction not keeping up with demand, and you have these millennials reaching their peak home buying years wanting to buy single family houses. So there's still a lot of things continuing to keep these inventory levels down and until that changes, I truly don't believe we're gonna see housing prices crash. Now, while we're not certain exactly what's gonna happen with the housing market, what we do know right now is the Federal Reserve is getting more and more hawkish. They raised interest rates 0.5% just the other day. They raised it another 0.25% back in March and they've made plans to start selling off their mortgage-backed securities and treasury bonds that they have been buying like crazy over the past several years. This could mean that mortgage interest rates could continue to go higher than they are even right now, which right now they're at very high levels compared to the last 10 years. So we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that. Again, all it takes is a shift in monetary policy and all of a sudden things can go the other way like we saw in the pandemic. So rather than trying to predict when the housing market crash is gonna happen like none of us can do, just focus on trying to buy assets. Try to be smart with your money. Don't overspend on housing. Don't spend more than 30% of your money on all your housing payments. And I promise you that over the long run, you're gonna be in a good position regardless of what the housing market does next year or in the next five years. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you liked it and you feel like you gained some value, do me a favor and support the channel by smashing that like button. And if you haven't already done so, definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell to watch more content like this. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you currently looking to buy a house? What are you looking to do? Finally, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at The Out of State Investor. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.